for all who believe. This is she whose life gave light to the world. From all eternity, God knew his mother. He loved her with an infinite love. Since before creation, he knew the multitude of blessings that he would bestow upon this purest of all of his creatures. He preserved her from sin because she was to be his own mother. She was conceived immaculately. And today we commemorate her glorious birth into the world. The coming of the long-awaited Redeemer is now very, very close. Generations had waited for this moment. This is she whose life gave light to the world. We know because she is God's mother, she, re- she received these multitude of graces. She was conceived immaculately. She was free from all sin and from the effects of sin as well. One effect that we all have to deal with is the slow acquiring of reason. Most of us don't have the use of our reason until we're five, six, seven years old, maybe even older. But it's the universal teaching of theologians that from the very moment of our Blessed Mother's conception, she had the full use of her intellect and of her reason. And it was from this very moment that she began to love God with all of her heart, with all of her mind, and with all of her strength. She is full of grace from the very moment of her conception. St. Alphonsus, in his beautiful work, The Glories of Mary, explains a teaching of many learned theologians. He says, along with those before him, that a soul possessing a habit of virtue, a holy soul, that makes perfect use of the actual grace that God gives it, performs an act that acquires each time a new and a double merit. What this means is in the case of our Blessed Mother, that at every moment since the beginning of her existence, she was receiving twice the merit in the eyes of God that she was the moment before, because so perfect was her love, so perfect was her conformity with God's grace. And St. Alphonsus continues, he says, think of this. If at her conception she had been given 1,000 degrees of merit, the next moment she had 2,000, and then 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, 32,000. And this is six seconds since her conception. because she conformed perfectly with the grace that God gave her. And this was an abundance of grace. So this little infant, this little baby girl, born today, loved God with a fire greater than all of the saints and all of the angels combined. If we think of that measure of St. Alphonsus, doubling every second, Think of how much in a day, how much in a week, how much in a month, in nine months. She was truly the holiest, the most beautiful of all of God's creatures, even at her birth. What a joyful day. What a wonderful thing to commemorate. How much hope it gives us. 
Truly her love was, in a sense, infinite, as explained again by St. Alphonsus Liguori. We all know well the angelic salutation, the words of the archangel Gabriel, Hail, full of grace. Mary is full of grace. And God cannot fill something beyond its capacity. We know that God is all-powerful, but this would be simply against reason. But what God can do with his infinite power is increase the capacity of that vessel. He can increase it indefinitely. And in this sense, as explained by St. Alphonsus, Mary's love was infinite because God, in his goodness, was always increasing the size of that vessel, the capacity that she had to gain merit, to love Almighty God. She is truly an ocean full of God's grace. This is a, a beautiful analogy that is used by many of the saints, water. They use water to describe grace, especially St. Teresa of Avila. We might think of ourselves as just a little cup. And to the degree that we correspond with God's grace, that cup is more or less full. And when it is full, then we have merited heaven. We love God with all of our hearts. We are completely done with ourselves. We are com- in one mind and one heart with Almighty God. But if we are just a little cup, many of his saints, in comparison with us, would be a vessel much larger. Some of the saints might have been the size of a a swimming pool. So great was their capacity for love. Some of the great saints, the apostles, a Saint Francis of Assisi, might be like a lake, so full were they with love of Almighty God. But our Blessed Mother is like all of the oceans of the world combined, all of the oceans, all of the lakes, all of the streams and rivers. So great was her capacity for love And this is another beautiful thought, that that water that is in our own little cup is filled by the waters of the earth. They come from our Blessed Mother. She who is full of grace fills our own cups because God willed that all grace comes through her. We know, of course, that Almighty God is the creator of this water and that there is an infinite difference between Jesus Christ, Almighty God, and the Blessed Mother. But nevertheless, it is his will that we receive all good things through her hands. So why all of these gifts? Why so very full of grace? The saints tell us that there are really three reasons. First, the glory of Almighty God and his mother. Her soul was full of grace because he wanted her for himself. She was perfectly beautiful. Her soul was without spot, entirely pleasing in God's eyes. Second, She was full of grace in her physical self because the second person of the Blessed Trinity would take his person from her flesh. Divinity would hide itself in her womb. 
She was full of grace, even in her body. Third, she was full of grace for us, that we might partake of this fullness. Again, God chose that his grace would flow through her, and there is an abundance of grace. It overflows. And if we are wise, we will hold our cup to that fountain. So, my dear friends in Christ, let us always be striving to fill our own vessel. Like St. Teresa of the Child Jesus explained, we might, some of the great saints were roses or lilies. We might just be a little violet, a little flower in God's garden. We might not be one of these great vessels, a lake like some of the saints. We might be just a little cup. But if we fill it to the very top, Almighty God will be pleased. This is our one and our only goal. Let us today congratulate our Blessed Mother. Let us give her a a birthday gift, the promise of a holy life. The most pleasing thing we can do for her immaculate heart on this her birthday is to make reparation for the sins committed against her, for the sins committed against her son's sacred heart by prayer and by penance. So as we continue with the holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us pray with all of our hearts, lovingly congratulating our Most Holy Mother on this, the feast of her nativity. Let us ask her to help us fill our own vessel that she may help us to be more like her, to be more like her divine Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.